Got us a slave cylinder here. Went to O'Reilly's just because I know we get a discount from coming. So now we're about to head to James. I brought a chip with me and hopefully we can get a decent base map for a D16 that'll run it as close as possible. I don't know how many times I'm gonna say this in this video, but do not contact James for base maps. Do not contact him for base maps unless you're gonna put a deposit down on a tune or something of that nature, man. Do not contact him for a base map and then attempt to just drive on the base map all the time because if your shit fucks up, his name is not gonna be on it. Base maps are not meant for you to drive around permanently on. They're just meant for you to get the car up and going and try to get it tuned as soon as possible. With that being said, some people don't have a dyno, so they street tune, that's perfectly fine. But all I'm saying is make sure you're tuning the car. Regardless if you roll the dynos or do it in the street, it's safer on the dyno, of course, but always make sure you get your car actually tuned by someone that knows what they're doing otherwise a base map is never 100 percent correct each engine is a little different each engine requires a little different air fuel mixture so it's better just to let somebody hands-on tune your vehicle on my way to sheets now to get a little 93 in this bad boy around here guys sheets I mean, they're the only place to get EA5, and Sheets is like the place to get 93. I know some people are really funny and only get like Shell and stuff like that, but um, for this truck, man, with this big ass gas tank, the Sheets, usually the 93 is damn near the same price as the 87. And right now, 87 at this Sitco I'm passing is 277. So we're gonna see what this uh, Sheets 93 hitting like and you'll see why I choose sheets over anywhere else because like most people's 93 be like 30, 40 cent more. But for some reason, this sheets, the 93 be really cheap, so. So you see this, this um, 93, guys, before I even hit the pump, for some reason, something is not right on these gas pumps because it's showing the 93 is actually cheaper than the 87. The 87 was saying 299. I think that's a mistake. I think it's supposed to be saying, um, if they got the sign and all saying 299. But the 93 was 281. And then with the discount, it's 278. So huge savings there. As you can see, I'm sitting in the truck now because this shit is literally going to take a minute. This thing was down to like a little under a quarter tank. So I already knew. It's gonna probably, it's gonna probably hold about seventy dollars, probably. It's just one of the things, man, with this truck. But the good thing about that is, when you hit the highway on this thing, I mean, a tank of gas, even towing, will take you like a couple states before you have have to fill up again. So that's one cool part. Full tank of gas. She took uh, seventy bucks on the dot, guys. Seventy bucks on the dot from a quarter of a tank so yeah prices are down so not too mad about that i mean once i was paying over a hundred dollars so yeah gas has definitely come down a little bit
<laughs> All right, so we got the slave still on. We got that bled, clutch is working good. We got the gas fixed, the throttle cable. The cable had just popped off of the actual panel inside the car where the firewall is. So I popped that back on and we're good there. Uh, yeah, and we troubleshooted the gauge cluster. This is the one I purchased right here. And the other one is laying over there in the floor. And we troubleshooted the, the gauge cluster guys. And what I think really is going on with this car is because I'm running an OBD2A conversion harness right now from the trap, I think some wires are just mixed up in it. And so it's not sending the right signals to the cluster to activate because everything guys is plugged up correctly. And this thing really does have almost a full tank of gas in it because this cluster was damn near on E when we plugged it in and it went almost to a full tank. So this thing has a lot of gas in it. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna end up putting that cluster back and I think my conversion plug should be in hopefully by Friday or maybe earlier part of next week. So I'm hoping when we put that in, I think that's gonna be our issue. And I think that will resolve that and that would be awesome because then all of our issues will have been fixed. We have the, the tune in it now from James, the, the stock D16 tune. So the car starts up, idles pretty good. And uh, the out air control valve is stuck wide open right now. So I put some tape over that, the hole in the throttle body. And that's good. So I think what I'm gonna try to do now is go ahead and get the radiator through in and maybe get some fluids in that and I think it should be pretty ready to uh, take down the street one time. So I got, Jeff already took off guys and I got the radiator pretty much installed. Car's looking pretty freaking complete, honestly. The radiator does not have like the, the peacock drain plug thing. It does not have that. So I gotta try to figure out where I can get one of those from. Everything else is looking pretty fucking minty. I'm super stoked. What is going on YouTube? So it is now Friday and it is it is the day before uh, Christmas Eve. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve, Sunday's Christmas Day. So I'm not gonna be able to do any work on the cars those two days, but this video is going out today. So hopefully in today's video, if you're watching this, we're gonna get this thing drivable and I'm gonna try to drive this shit down the road. Now, what have I been researching and figuring out well guys i was thinking about it the other night and honestly i believe i really do believe that i have a fucking harness for this car i swear i think i have a harness for this car and i swear i think it's this one. i think it's this one guys yes sir Yes, sir. This is it. This is it. So, someone come in and said something about my car. This horn is only having two plugs. Well, it's really got three, but one is the green that goes to the chassis. Now, this one doesn't have that green plug. But it's got three plugs here. It just doesn't have a green plug. Now, I know for a fact I pulled this out of a manual transmission um, EK four door at the junkyard. And I didn't never, I, didn't, I, I never got around to selling it, so that's why we still have it. And I thought about it the other day, I was like, man, I swear I think I already got another harness. So this is big, why is this big? Because 
in case I'm wrong, which I don't think I'm wrong about this, but in case I am, we have another harness. So whenever we pull the engine, we can just switch the whole harness out and um, we should be able to get this cluster and stuff working. But the reason I don't think I'm wrong is because this thing has the green plug and it plugs in. So if you look in the passenger side, now you saw that harness back there did not have that green plug on it. So what would plug into it? That's what I'm trying to say. I feel like this is the correct harness. I just feel like that, that OBD2 A and B stuff has got us mixed up. But if you look down here, you see that's the harness right there. And you see it's got the two wires right there going to the computer and then it's got this third green plug that goes to the actual cabin harness. And it plugs up like it should. That's what I'm saying. I don't think, I think I have the correct manual transmission harness for this car. I just feel like, uh, I just feel like it's this, something with this OBD, a, OBD2 A and B stuff that's got a wire mixed up. Because again, like I said, when you turn the switch on, the, uh, the, the fuel pump runs all the time. And I know that's not right. It's supposed to build pressure and then cut off, but it runs like the entire time. So what I'm thinking is, again, we got a wire mixed up to where it just feeds like all the time. Like it's just, and so, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at with this. Now I've been letting it cycle through and warm up. We do have a leak, but this valve is already broke off at the bottom. So I just barely got enough hose on there to kind of hold the water, but it's, it's leaking it out. But I wasn't too worried about that. I really just wanted to try to go down the road on it. But uh, yeah, I man, that's gotta be riding up, bro. That's got to be riding up.
but I mean, she's uh she's holding steady at the right temp and stuff. The fans haven't came on yet, but. Definitely sounds like it's, it's down there. I was hoping maybe it could be like a loose boat or something like uh, within the flywheel or the pressure plate and stuff, but I think it, it's confirming to be riding up because when you push the clutch in, it'll get louder sometimes. So I think what it is when you put the pressure on that side and the crank slides over, it's really letting you know that uh, yeah, one side, something is, something is not happy in the block, I don't think. So I'm trying to wait till the fans come on so that we know like the whole system works good. We know the entire car is side up perfectly. But uh, while I wait, man, I just want to say, man, I, I'm trying, guys, I'm really trying here. But I think the best, best, cheapest budget option is going to be to find another v16 to slap in here i definitely don't want to go backwards i don't want nothing else but the y8 i really i was really hyped because they say that this is like a real good performing engine for a stock engine and um i really wanted to do Boton and just uh tune this thing as it is side note if you don't watch hunter tune he actually has a z6 uh, Dale Soda, he just dyno bone stock. It made 140 horsepower and 118 foot-pounds of torque, which is crazy to say because it makes eight more foot-pounds of torque than Nisha's B16 in her Civic. So these D-Series definitely have something to offer. And uh, I really want to try to tap into that. And again, I knew I was going to have to pull the engine out anyway, but Man, I was hoping I didn't have to spend any more money, but that's that's gotta be the damn that's gotta be a, a ride not going on. I mean, look at the fucking water. Like, what the fuck? That's crazy as fuck. <laughs> and for some reason, the fans are just not coming on. Like I said, it could be again that, that we have the wrong harness in there. That could be an issue. Uh, but you just don't know.
it seems almost like the more I have sat here and revved it, the, the clicking sound has went away. The clicking sound has went away. I, I'm not, I'm not messing with this today. I am not messing with it today. What I'm gonna do, guys, I know y'all are all mechanics, so leave in the comments. I think it's riding out. I think the fucking D-Series is trying to fool my ass into trying to use this fucking motor and then something mess up down the road. I think it's fucking, it's the engine ride docking, but it's crazy, like it, it got so much quieter. Let's see, let me see if I can hear it now. I'm gonna try to get it back running and we're gonna try to see if we can still hear it under the bottom. Because this, this fucking, this, this is messing with me. Like now, I mean now it's, it's like so much fucking quiet. That's definitely got it. What the fuck? What the fuck, man? Like, I know y'all gotta hear this. I know I'm using a GoPro, but you got to hear how fucking quiet this fucking engine is. Do y'all hear that? Like, what the fuck? What the fuck is that? Like, Okay, so as bad as I really want to take this thing down the fucking road and just say, screw it anyway, I don't think I'm going to do that today because I got to figure things out. The most logical thing for me to do, guys, is wait till I can get the conversion, the right conversion harness and see if that fixes the fans and stuff because, it, like I said, the fans aren't working. I found out they had it jumped. They jumped the fan plug and then they plugged it back onto the damn sensor. So that, like, why would you do that? That makes no sense. But anyway, I figured out that was jumped. So uh, I checked the relay. The relay looked it pretty melted. So I um, I went ahead and uh, put a relay in it and it's still not working. But in order for me to properly diagnose this thing, I think we're going to just have to have that correct OBD uh, wire harness and we get the cluster and stuff working and we know for sure then that uh, anything that's not working in the engine bay is uh, not working. So what I'm gonna do is call it here. Uh, we're gonna try to wait, hopefully that, that harness will come by at least Monday or Tuesday so that we can do some more digging. And I'm also just gonna dig around for a, another d16 y8 engine hopefully i can find one a lot of people are swapping out for k's and stuff these days so i'm hoping i can find one for a pretty decent deal decent deal meaning no more than like 300 bucks hopefully but um yeah it's this is like one of my least favorite engines just because of the reason of like when people have them they do get abused a lot and so yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you right now offhand, if I get one more engine, one more D16 and it's fucked up or something's wrong with it, I'm putting a full F swap in this thing. I'm going to put a full fucking F swap, uh, F23 of course, with a uh, Civic, probably a, not a Civic, uh, an Accord transmission and just a cord linkage and stuff and just, just say fuck it, call it there. I'm not going to keep fucking with these engines because... At the end of the day, I could make this thing a little bit quicker than that and it still be really reliable. And um, yeah, so the transmission feels pretty damn decent. 
So that's giving me hope. I don't know how it's gonna shift driving, but I know it shifts pretty good on the stands and stuff. I've went through all the gears, reverse, everything seems to go in and work. Um, so I'm gonna have faith. But if you could guys, smack the like button right now for me. Let me know in the comments what you think of this engine. Do you think it's riding out? I think it's definitely riding out. It's trying to fool me though, it's going, it's like, the longer I ran it, it's gotten better, but I'm pretty sure that it's gonna, it's gonna bite me in the butt if, if it is riding out. But it could be a loose boat. I've seen people think they have riding out and it be like a flywheel boat or pressure plate boat that's loose. So, um, yeah, with that being said, I, I don't know exactly, man. I just, I feel, I don't know why I feel strongly. My luck with buying cars is not gonna be as easy as I was thinking this was gonna be. It never is when I buy a car. So um, yeah, that being said, we'll just have to uh, continue this next video. I hope y'all enjoyed it though. Smack the like button for me. I will catch y'all next time. Remember, respect all bills. Peace out.